hello guys uh welcome back to my channel based on african motives uh, still working on all level mathematics uh, in this platform we have got the question paper which was actually written in uh, june 2014 that we are going to focus on and see how we are supposed to attempt uh, uh, these typical questions which is paper one uh, as we know guys two hours 30 minutes for our paper and also you're supposed to read all the instructions that you are given uh, carefully so that um, you won't uh, go wrong okay so the first part that you're given guys is clear on this particular section we have got a number that we are given which is a decimal uh, 2046,489 uh, correct we are asked to express this uh, to the nearest 10 okay so guys as we know that uh, if we are given a number like this 2046 comma four eight uh, nine uh, this is going to be your units your tens your hundred your thousands here so to the nearest ten that means you are going to focus on this number so as you can see uh, six is going to change this number which is going to be two zero uh, it's going to be five and this will be a zero there the moment you change this number this uh, becomes a zero okay then all these numbers are going to be zeros so which means this to the next 10 is going to give us 2050 because these zeros after the comma they are not uh, important all right to two decimal places which means we are, we are going to count two decimal places uh, that is digits after the comma so this is a whole number here and this is after the comma so that is where you count so we need two digits after the comma that is what you refer as decimal places so we are going to count one two as you can see nine is going to change this number because it's greater than five which is going to be nine so our answer is going to be two zero four uh two zero four six comma four nine this is going to be four nine all right just like that then to two significant figures significant figures now we are referring to the whole numbers remember significant these are whole numbers so we are going to count the first whole number and the first whole number that we have here is two so you're going to count one two and as you can see two digits four cannot change this two so it's going to be uh, this zero here so it is going to be a zero so it's going to be two zero 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 comma zero 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 and so on which is just uh 2000 like that okay so that is what you have so in this case uh please take note guys how you round off it's very very important um how you express your values is very very important all right so let's see another question anyways that we had we are asked here to give your answer as a decimal find the exact value of okay so the first part we are just subtracting here on a guys uh that's zero comma one seven five minus uh make sure that whenever you're subtracting i told you guys that it's the, the matter of the commas they must be in in line so this is going to be zero comma zero four nine as you can see the commas are in line and the numbers they are also uh, corresponding to each other so here we can easily subtract five minus nine which is impossible so we have to give one here and uh, that is going to be 15 and this will be five so 15 minus nine which is now six seven minus five it's possible seven minus five this is two one minus zero it's possible which is one comma zero minus zero which is zero so which means you're going to obtain zero comma one two six all right then what about on b where we are asked to find or to evaluate the square root of zero comma one four zero four zero one four four like that we want to find the square root of that expression or that term so remember guys the square root uh what you guys I, I skipped something okay so this page okay it's fine i'm going to look at it it's fine let's just continue i'm seeing that why is it now i'm number three from number one okay anyways this is what is going to happen we have got two options here the first option you can actually determine the square root of this value the whole number that you can see which is uh, 144 so square root of 144 is going to give us 12 all right then for you to know the number of decimal places that is going to be on your answer you're going to 
divide by the square root the number in the side the square root is 2 here it's not written but you must know that whenever it's a square root there is 2 there so you're going to divide 1 2 3 4 you've got 4 decimal places you divide by 2 which means your answer is going to have 2 decimal places that's got 1 2 so you're going to have 0 comma 1 2 plus or minus that is what you have but uh, let's say I wanted to use this concept because I can express this to be a fraction, which means there's a fraction. Remember, just take this whole number, one, uh, 144. So this is the same as the square root of 144 over, how many decimal places do we have? We put 1, 2, 3, 4. So which means it's over 10,000. Your number must have uh, four zeros like that. So that's it. So square root of any number is plus or minus square root of 144. This is 12 over square root of 10,000, which is 100. Because you've got uh, four digits, so it's going to be 100 times 100, which gives you 10,000. So as we can see, guys, we can simply divide, because this is 12, move two commas, one, two, so it's going to be zero comma, one, two. So that's what you have in this case. All right, what about um, the C part, where we have got uh, 0, 0,06 to the exponent of 2? How can we evaluate this? We have we just need to multiply. This simply means you are multiplying 0, 0,06 multiply by 0, 0,06. So as you can see, 6 times 6, that is 36. And how many decimal places do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So we've got 4 decimal places. So my answer is going to have 4 digits after the comma. That is 1, 2, 3, 4. So now these are the 4 digits which are supposed to be after the comma so the comma is supposed to be uh, like these 10 digits after the comma like that so that's what we had uh, guys so like i said with this part that uh, almost left out which is uh okay that's to add 3 over 5 plus 1 over 7 so as you can see guys as we are adding we just need to find uh the lcm or the lced in this case so it's lcm or the LCD, which is lowest common denominator or lowest common multiple. So what is the LCM of 5 and 7? Multiply, which is 35. 35 divided by 5, that is 7, then times 1. 7 times 1, uh, times 3, sorry, which is 21. Plus 35 divided by 7, which is 5, then 5 times 1, which is just 5. Okay, so this is going to give us 21 plus 5 over 35. Okay, 21 plus 5, which is going to give us uh, 26. This is 35, sorry, which is going to give us 26 here over 35. Is there anything that we can do? Actually, there's nothing. All right, then on B, 5 over 8 times uh, 32 over 45, like this. So we can actually multiply, just uh, try and by reduce by 5, because already you're multiplying. So you can start by reducing by 5 here. That is 1. 5 into 45, that is 9. 8 into 8, that is 1. 8 into 32, that is 4. So, which means I am going to obtain uh, something like this. Alright, we say this is going to give us, um, we have reduced here, so you can multiply the numerator because you can't reduce anything now. So, you can just multiply your numerator versus the numerator, that's 1 times 4 which is 4 over 1 times 9, which is 9. So we are going to have 4 over 9 in this case. All right. So that's it, guys. What about uh, the C part? The C part, these two, they are dividing. Take note, 5 over 24 is dividing. So what are you going to do? Introduce multiplication. The moment you introduce multiplication, what happens? You invert the second fraction, which means you are going to interchange is going to be 3 over 1 now 3 over 1 so under multiplication as you can see just like what we did here we can reduce our fraction uh, by what is common 3 into 3 that is 1 into 24 uh, which is going to give us 8 that is 8 okay that is 3 yeah, 8 16 and 24 there so you can multiply 5 times 3 which is 5 over 8 times 1 which is 8 so the answer is going to be 5 over 8. So guys, as you can see, uh, some of these questions, they are a little bit uh, direct to the, to the point. Alright, so 
let's see here on number five we are asked to expand so there is just a matter of expanding two and one so two times one that is two uh, a times one sorry which is two a then we move on two a is going to multiply c so it's two a and c which is two a c okay we are done by two a then you move on to minus b so it's minus b and one minus b times one which is minus b then minus b and c minus b times c which is minus b c do we have any like terms here we do not have so just like that we are done just like that guys we are done all right on b we are asked to simplify in this case uh, so take note guys as you are simplifying it is best that you have to uh, factorize if possible then uh, you can uh, able to multiply but in this case i want you to take note that you are dividing here so before you introduce before you talk of any factorization that is going to take place first introduce multiplication so that you won't uh, forget that part because most of you you actually forget that part so make sure that you will introduce that uh, multiplication so in this case what are you going to do as we see that we are dividing so just like what we did previously if you introduce multiplication so this is actually division but the only part that you if you see it you see like it's an addition it's a division that one all right so we have got uh, m squared minus mn over n squared minus np so this is what you have so the moment I introduce multiplication, which means it's going to interchange, it's now n minus p over m. So it will be n minus p over m. We have introduced multiplication. We invert the second fraction. So it's all is about the second fraction. Now at this stage, we are now back to factorization so that we can be able to cancel if possible. So this is going to give us m is common here. So you can factor out m, which is our highest common factor. m squared divided by m, that is m minus mn divided by m, that's m and m can cancel, which means you're going to be left with n. Then uh, n is common here, so you can factor out n. So n squared divided by n, which is n minus np divided by n. So as you can see, n and n will cancel, which means you're going to be left with p, which is n minus p multiply by n minus p over m so that's the stage where we are now so what can we do definitely have to cancel where it is what where it is applicable so this bracket and this bracket can cancel uh, this m and this m can cancel which means you're just left with one here one so m minus m minus n times one which is m minus n of n times one which is actually n so that's what you're going to have at the end so as you can see guys there's nothing that you can do here yeah, never be tempted to cancel this one and this one then you'll be left with m minus one this is actually wrong because this one is an expression so you can't separate this just leave it like that uh, as a single fraction remember they want it as a single fraction so just leave it at this stage uh, like that so that's what we just made guys and uh, we are given on number five we've got a set of numbers uh, that is our universal set as you can see in the universal set we are given elements 30 up to 39 then now we are given that a is a set of odd numbers so it is best whether they asked you to list it but it is best for you to talk to list that a down which is the list of odd numbers remember odd numbers we are referring to those numbers that uh, when you divide uh, that number by two it will leave a remainder of what it will leave a remainder of one so which numbers do we have inside this set from 30 up to 39 so we are referring to a number like 31 when you divide by two you, you will leave a remainder you're going to remain with the remainder of one here so you're talking of 31 uh, 33 we are talking of 35 we are talking of 37 we are talking of 39 all these numbers when you divide by 2 they will give you a remainder of what of 1 then b is a set of prime numbers prime numbers don't confuse 
prime numbers and odd numbers. Prime numbers, you are talking of numbers which are exactly divisible by one and itself. So a prime number can also be an odd number because you are talking of numbers which are exactly divisible by one and itself. So talking of that one, we do not have any number that can be divided into that one. It's only that one here. Okay, here we can take both two. We have got 32, we have got one here, we've got three. So there are so many. We move on to 37 there. We do not have any number that can be divided. So as I was saying, guys, as you can see, we have got here a prime number, but it's also an odd number. A prime number, but it's also an odd number. So that's something that you're supposed to know about. Okay, anyways, let's see what we have. The first question that we had on number a item 1a was to list the elements of a so this is what you're going to do you're going to list this set uh separately so already i've listed it but you are going to list it again okay item 2 which is b to the exponent of 1 this one means the complement of what of b that is the complement of b elements which are not in b all right guys let me just try to adjust All right, I don't know what actually happened there. I hope it's clear. Uh, maybe it's the marker that I'm using is a little bit smaller, so it's difficult to to be seen here. Anyways, so I'm saying the complement of B is actually elements which are not in B, but they are in the universal set. So you come back here to the universal set. That is where you are going to have those elements. That is your B complement. All right. So our B complement is going to be those elements which are not in B, but they are in the universal set, which is your both well, universal set is your mother set, this one. So which means we have got 30 here, it's not in B. All right. So the complement of B, you're actually referring to the elements which are not in what, which are not in B, but they're in the universal set, which means you're talking of uh, referring here, we've got 30. This element is not actually in what? In B. This 30 here is not in B. All right. Which else do we have? We've got 32 here. It's not in B. All right. We have got uh, 33. It's not in B. Uh, 34. It's not in B. 35. It's not in B. 36. It's not in B. But 37 here is there in B. So which means you cannot take this value. We move on to 38 and 39. So we have got uh, 38 and 39. These elements, they are not in what? In B. So that is what you are referring to as the complement of B. Those elements which are not found in B, but they are in the universal set. All right. Then the other question that we have here is actually to determine or to find the number of elements which are in A intersection B complement. So for you to have this number, this is number of elements, you are stating how many elements do we have inside that set. So for you to have this, you must first find A. Okay, so this was your item two, this one. Okay, this was your item one. Okay, then this is our B now. So the first thing that you're supposed to do, let us find this first A intersection b complement okay that is what you need to find first if you are referring to a intersection b complement okay you are just referring remember intersection you are talking of elements which are found in both sets both of these two that is where you are referring to the intersection it is found in both so this is our set a here this is our b complement so which are the elements which are in both okay so we are going to cross check between this set here and this set this is where our answer is supposed to be so let's cross check um elements we've got 33 here and uh, 33 here this is common between the two what else do we have we've got 35 and 35 here this is common uh, they are common two elements they are common all right and 39 also and 39 also these elements they are common 
so that is what you have in a intersection you are referring to the set of a and b complement these are the sets that you have what is in between those two sets but now the question is to state the number that is a a intersection b complement how many elements are there so you're counting one two three so you've got three elements in this case you are counting the number of elements how many are they all right so guys let me just try and uh, change this setup because i don't know what is actually happening let me adjust all right so that's what we had guys let's see the other part which is uh on number six we are given to state the special type of a triangle which has got uh, one line of uh, symmetry so that is an isosceles triangle guys remember in isosceles triangle it has got only one line of symmetry so it's an isosceles triangle if it is an equilateral triangle it goes if this one it has got three lines of symmetry a scalene has got no line of symmetry okay so here we've got no line of symmetry here we've got three and you've got one line of symmetry so that one is an isosceles triangle okay then here we are given that there is a polygon take note guys there's a polygon which has got uh, any sides so which means we do not know the number of sides but we are given that two of its exterior angles take note you are given what exterior angles these are the two angles 55 and 45 and the remaining angles which is n minus 2 of the exterior angles are each 20 degrees okay so working with this question you will see that we are given a condition of exterior angles of a certain polygon that we do not know all right but as we know that whether this polygon is having seven sides eight sides or no matter the number of sides that it is having what we know that all the exterior angles they add up to 360 degrees all exterior angles so now we are going to equate that because what we need is to calculate the value of n so we know that if we add everything here it must give us 360 which means you're talking of what two angles which is 55 and 45 so if we add 55 plus 45 that is the two angles then there are angles which are remaining let's say these are seven angles which are remaining if each is 20 degrees that means you're going to multiply seven times 20 if there were three sides which are remaining that is we're going to multiply three times 20 but this time it's n minus two which are remaining so you're going to multiply this by each of the angles because each is 20 degrees and there are n minus 2 angles so you're going to multiply each by 20 so it's going to be 20 by n minus 2 so that is the concept because you are given that there are like seven angles remaining like what i'm trying to say that if there are seven angles which are remaining okay if you have got seven angles which are remaining and each is 20 degrees how do you simplify you multiply each by but here we've got n minus 2 so you multiply it to what to 20 so it's the same as 20 into n minus 2 but we said all these exterior angles they are going to add up to 360 degrees for any polygon that we have in our syllabus all right so that's what you're going to have guys you have now having a normal equation because you want to calculate n and there is n in this equation so just so your normal equation you can add the numbers uh, 55 and uh, 45 in this case which is going to give you 100 so you've got 100 in this case plus uh, here you can expand these brackets or you can just leave it like that 20 into n minus 2 which is equal to 360 okay so let's transpose because this is not part of this bracket so you can transpose this to the right side which means it is going to be minus 100 so you're going to be left with the 20 into n minus 2 which is going to give us a 360 
minus 100 which is a 260 all right yes i was supposed to expand this bracket and so forth but what if i just divide because these are like like uh, they are common uh, it's a factor 20 is a factor of this number so i can just divide by this 20 to avoid all that uh, calculation so n minus 2 is equal to if i divide here 2 that's 1 2 here which is 3 so now we can transpose our negative 2 to the right side which is going to give us a positive 2 so n is going to be 13 plus 2 which is 15 so definitely this polygon has got 15 sides that is what it means all right so that's how they ask these questions sometimes and how you're supposed to answer those typical questions okay on well, number nine we are given uh, i don't know this is the type of paper that i'm using that is reflecting like this i don't know what's happening but anyways on number nine, seven we are given to express nine minutes after midnight is a time in 24 hour clock so this is nine minutes after midnight we know at midnight that is zero 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 so definitely nine minutes after is just going to be zero 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 nine hours so that is what you're going to have in 24 hour notation all right what if they said nine minutes before if it is nine minutes before then you're going to subtract from zero 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 you subtract one so it is going to be 23 uh, 51 hours this is nine minutes before midnight this is nine minutes after midnight so please not between the two okay in 1998 there is a population in a certain village which was uh, 2,8 times 10 to the power 2 uh, in 2004 the population was 3,5 times 10 to the power 2 that is a certain uh, village calculate the percentage increase of the population from 1998 to 2004 okay i think i talked uh, much about these typical questions whether it's a population increase it's an increase in terms of money whatever there is an increase where you started you started at 100 percent so where did we start from we started in 1998 that is where we are given a population in 1998 then after that in 2004 so which means this population that we see in 1998 was at 100% before any increase so what I'm trying to say is that um, in 1998 we are given a certain population there which is we are referring that population as it is at 100% before anything happened to this population that we had in 1998 of 2,8 times 10 to the power 2 okay that was our population there and now they are saying there was an increase in population now in 2004 and the population increased to this value so what was the percentage increase that made the population to be at 3,5 times 10 to the power 2 what was the percentage so what we are going to do is to find the percentage that is going to correspond in 2004 to this population then we subtract so that we can have our difference because definitely since there was an increase this is going to give us a bigger value so we are going to take this more which is 3,5 times 10 to the power 2 over 2,8 times 10 to the power 2 times 100 percent so that's our population increase which is going to be because what you want which is more is the one that you're going to write on top so as you can see these two are the same so just cancel them so i'm going to be left with 3,5 over 2,8 but guys 3,5 over 2,8 we have got one decimal place one decimal place so you can just multiply by 10 by 10 which is going to give you 35 over 28 as a whole number so that at least you can work with something that you understand than a fraction than a decimal fraction that you don't understand all right so this is going to give us uh, 35 over 28 times 100 percent so i haven't changed anything from these two because what i did on the numerator i also did it on the denominator so that one has got no effect all right so let's reduce guys we can reduce by 7 here which is 5 by 7 which is 4 4 into 4 that is 1 4 into 100 remember that is 25 25 
times 4 that is 100 so now 25 times 25 which is uh, 175 25 times 25 which is going to give us 175 percent remember this is percentage that we are talking about in this case so if this is percentage guys okay this is 125 guys let's just do this properly all right that's five times five which is uh, five two ten plus which is 125 guys you see this issue of growing up is not good this is 125 percent actually that's five because that one was five all right unless it's by five here this is where we went it wrong place okay by seven this is five by seven this is four okay so like the number that i was using okay this is seven and this is four okay seven this is five so everything is okay there so it's gonna give us 125 percent so now i'm saying at this 125 percent that where we are now we are saying the population was originally at 100 percent before an increase happened so now there is an increase which took place and we are at 125 percent what then was the increase because that is what we are asked to calculate in this case what you need is the increase in percentage okay maybe if you can have take note guys calculate the percentage increase of the population not where the population is now but what was increased from 100 percent to 125 percent what did you increase so definitely that's going to be 125 minus 100 which is 25 percent okay so you just cross check guys the issue of multiplication make sure that your numbers they are fine here but the idea is uh, that uh, because we know when you're multiplying when you're dividing all those errors and mistakes but just cross check but everything that is what it's supposed to be like there all right on number eight we are given to solve the simultaneous equations we are given is simultaneous equations on number eight it's actually number eight not number seven so this is number eight where we have got uh, f that x equal to y and uh, 2x plus y which is equivalent to minus 7 so whenever you're solving an equation you can actually choose uh, how and what to, how to simplify this why is the subject you can substitute it here but what i want you to avoid is that i want you to see something when you substitute this y it's a third x which is a fraction so you're going to substitute a fraction here which means you're going to work with a fraction so just avoid working with a fraction so how am i going to avoid working with a fraction just multiply by a third by a third this equation so this can cancel so from our first equation we can write this uh, our first equation as suppose this is cancelled so we're going to be left with one x of which one x is same as x is equal to three times y which is three y so at least i'm working with something that is uh, direct which is not a fraction so in place of x i can substitute 3y or, or depending with the method that you're going to use so in this case i'm just going to use a substitution uh, method all right so using substitution method already x is the subject so in place of x i'm going to substitute 3y which is 2 times x my x here which is 3y plus y which is equal to minus 7 so that's it guys we can expand our brackets then we can simplify further which is 2 times 3 that is 6y plus y which is equal to minus 7 so collecting like terms because this is same as 1y so it's 6 plus 1 which is 7y is equal to minus 7 so to find y i can divide by 7 both sides so which means y is equal to minus one so that is what we have guys on that part y is going to give us uh, minus one in this case and uh, we said uh, or we have made x to be the subject I said x is equal to three y so definitely x is equal to three times y which is minus one so x is going to be minus three so 
that's it guys when using a substitution method or you can use like i said you can choose maybe you wanted to apply elimination so at this stage what you're going to do was to transpose this to this side which was going to be x minus 3y is equal to 0 so you're going to have your equation like this x minus 3y is equal to 0 then this one you just take it at this stage is fine as it is 2x uh, plus y is equal to minus 7 then now you can eliminate your x or your y by interchangeable this one is same as 1 so you can multiply by interchange this by 2 by 1 so by 2 this will give you 2x by 2 minus 6y which is equal to by 2 which is each and every term by 1 which is a 2x by 1 which is y is equal to 1 times minus 7 which is a minus 7 there so we can eliminate x how can i eliminate x subtract because these two are having the same uh signs that is a positive and a positive so you subtract so 2 minus 2 that is 0 minus 6 minus this is same as 1 so it's minus 6 minus 1 which is going to give us a uh, minus 7y which is equal to 0 minus minus so it's like this 0 minus minus 7 which is going to give us a plus 7 divide by minus 7 by minus 7 so as we can see y is going to give us minus 1 so we have got the value of y which is minus 1 you can substitute into any of these equations uh, to find the value of x x minus uh, 3y is equal to 0 here and y is minus 1 so x minus 3 into y which is minus 1 is equal to 0 so x minus and minus that's a plus which is equal to 0 here so you can transpose minus 3 to the other side which is going to be minus 3 so as you can see guys we are still obtaining the same values there are so many methods i can't break all of them but so many methods that you can have there okay on number nine we are given that uh, there is a function of x that we have in this case uh, let me just write that function aside so that we can understand what's happening we are given the function of x which is equivalent to x minus one into x plus six that is our function of x then we are given that and that f of zero is equal to p find the value of p when we are given to say that f of zero is equal to p there's we know remember f of zero what does it mean it means in place of x substitute zero so they are saying when you substitute zero here your answer is going to be p so what is that p that answer so p is representing what the answer that you obtain when you substitute in place of x what is zero so which means your p is simply the value that is going to be when you substitute a zero here so that's zero minus one in place of x in place of x that's zero plus six that is what it means so zero minus one remember guys this is minus one zero plus six which is six so these are brackets which means you are multiplying minus one times six which is minus six so that's your p because p is f of zero the answer when you substitute zero there okay that's it guys and then we are given uh, a question where you are supposed to make k to be the subject of the formula okay so i'm just going to rewrite that down so that we can see how we were supposed to actually simplify this all right that's uh, 9b yk is equivalent to ax minus bk all right so that's what you're given and you want to make k to be the subject so in this case what am i going to do uh definitely i have to collect the terms with k to one side of the equation uh so that i'll be able to simplify further okay so let's start by that by collecting the terms of k this is minus b so at the moment it crosses the equal sign definitely it is going to change its sign to a plus so this is going to be yk plus bk in this case which is equivalent to ax remember i am focusing with k so here we've got k we also have a k here so what can we do because we're just supposed to remain with one k and there are two so i have to factor out that k 
So if I factor out this, I'm going to be left with yk divided by k, which is y bk divided by k, which is b. Remember, when you factor out, you're dividing yk divided by k, you're going to be left with y just like that, which is equal to ax. Then there's a bracket and you are multiplying. How do you remove a bracket? You have to divide. Divide by y plus b. Divide by y plus b. It's either b plus y or y plus b. It's just one and the same thing. So therefore, your k is going to be ax over y plus b. So this is what you're going to, to have in this case. So as you can see, guys, that's how they ask these questions and how you're supposed to attempt uh, such typical questions. Uh, carefully okay let's see another question that we had which is on question number 10 where we are given to express the number that we are given there is a number in s3 actually I have talked about this previously that you can convert the number that you are given to base 10 because already that is an indication that this number was going to what was being converted to to base 10 from base 3 so you can convert to base 10, direct to base 10, then you divide by 3 throughout because you want to convert to base 3. Or you can apply this method which I have uh, been working with on, on, on uh, past classes where I was talking that uh, this is a conversion which was taking place from what? From base 3 to base 10. This is what was actually happening to base 10, sorry. This part here when you raise in terms of exponents, which means this this is an indication of the base remember when you raise a number in terms of its base that is how you write it so which means for us to write what a uh, three to the exponent of four like this it means the number that is multiplying this number is just a one because there's no effect it's just remained as it was so which means this was same as one times three to the exponent of four plus remember when you were writing in terms of exponents you were writing in terms of exponents from zero up to the last exponent so your last exponent is 4 so you're going to reduce from 4 going downwards up to what up to 0 which is the last exponent okay so we've got 4 here okay we have got 4 that is our first exponent but let's cross check here we have got 2 3 is not there so what happened with 3 which means there was a 0 there so that was 0 times 3 to the exponent of 3 because it's not totally represented all right so we move on to 2 2 is there so which means the number that was multiplying here was just a 1 so that it just remains as it was you're not supposed to change the meaning of this so this was 1 times 3 to the exponent of 2 plus here this 3 is as you can see it's already there so it's 1 times 3 to the exponent of 1 to the exponent of zero it's not there which means it was multiplied by a zero so it was like this zero times three to the exponent of zero like that remember guys when you, you convert to base 10 when there's a condition like this where you've got a zero and zero you don't write it you can simply remove that condition that is what happened that condition is not written here it's not represented there so that is why you see it is like this so now you must have that mindset to know that there is a 3 which is not there. So it's supposed to be. So actually, you're not supposed to do all this expansion. You're supposed to have that in mindset and imagination of that. So which means the number that was there, here was 1. Here there was a 0. Here there was a 1. Here there was a 1. Here there was a 0 in base of what? In base of 3. So this is your number in base of 3. So like I said, you can convert this number to base 10, then divide by 3 throughout. You are going to obtain the same answer. So I want you to I want to challenge you to work on that one and see if you're going to obtain the same answer. Okay, so can we do that, guys? Can we do that? Can we do that? All right. On number B, we've got uh, a number base that you're supposed to add uh, in base of 8, which is uh, 1, 4, 3. Uh, base 8 plus 5 7 base 8 so this is 5 7 guys in base of 8 okay i don't know actually this setup how it is affecting i don't know so this is actually 5 7 in base of 8 okay so 
So this is plus five, seven, inverse of eight. I think just focus on this one, which is clear. So remember when you're adding, you're supposed to write these numbers uh, corresponding from the left side. So I'm just going to rewrite this as one, four, three, inverse of eight, five, seven. So it's going to be seven, five, inverse of eight, like that. So this must correspond from the right going to the, to the left. Okay, I am adding. So let's add together, guys. Remember, this is addition of number bases where we know that we must have something. Every number that we must have must be less than 8. So let's add 3 plus 7, which is 10. And 10 is more than the base. So what do you do? If the number is more than the base, you divide because you obtained 10. So divide by the base, which is 8. 8 into 10, that's 1 remainder 2. So your remainder on your answer then this one is the one that you're going to add so let's add guys let's add together let's add and see what you're going to have at the end okay let's add let me adjust a little bit further again all right so we are going to have 10 again here that's 5 plus 5 which is 10 so as you can see it's a repetition 10 divided which is 1 remainder 2 we do the same here we give 1 so it's 1 plus 1 which is 2 so 2 is below the base so I'm just going to write it so that is what you're going to have in this case so you add as long your number is above the given base as long your number is above or equal to the given base you have to divide by the base and not the what and not the remainder that is the condition that you are supposed to to take actually all right so i think we understand what i'm trying to say we understand this okay so let's see another part that we had which is uh, on um, item two which is uh, to give that number in base 10 okay let's just see the number that you're given uh, that's four base five minus two base three plus 1 base 2 uh, giving your answer in base 10 so they're saying write this answer in base 10 and as you can see it's actually one mark so actually what's happening here these are numbers which are this is a number in base 5 and 4 in base 5 is just the same as 4 in because you're talking of base 10 so this 4 in base 5 is same as 4 in base 10 or you can convert guys if you if this is not clear for you you can convert four times remember what you convert to base 10 you raise to the exponent of the base which is five to the exponent of zero that's the first term and you only have one term five to the exponent of zero that is one one times four which is four you do the same here you so you're going to say this is going to give you two and this will give you one so that's it guys in base 10 so you can add four plus one which is five five minus two which is three so this is going to give us three in base 10 so you can write it like that 3 base 10 or you can just write it as 3 in base 10 there's no problem so that is what you had guys on this question which was to express in base of what in base of 10 all right then we are given on number 11 uh, we are given a diagram where we are having our circle geometry so always like i say guys on circle geometry make sure that you try by all means to at least fill in the information if possible in the diagram okay try and list all the information that you'll be given uh, there so this is uh, actually a if you are to cross it this is a cyclic quad uh, a b c d these points are on the circumference of a circle so that's a cyclic quad and we know that opposite angles of a cyclic quad they are supplementary that is the add up to 180 so to find this angle you can simply subtract from 180 that's uh, 180 minus 116 and this is 64 guys okay then now what else we can find also this angle angles on a straight line so we can subtract from 180 here angles on a straight line so we can find this angle which is going to give us uh we subtract properly guys this is going to give us something like 66 degrees also we know that uh, these are tangents actually this is a tangent this is a tangent and they meet at point e and what do we know two tangents from their external point of a circle at their point of contact they are what they are equal these tangents so these two are equal which means this angle and this angle is equal 
so you can also find this angle so there are so many things that you can actually do considering just tangents and all these laws okay so the first part we are given that calculate adc okay that's adc so already adc calculated this we said 64 degrees from which concept opposite angles of a cyclic quad add up to 180 so you subtract from 180 cde cde already calculated this one from which concept this is a tangent is a straight line and angles on a straight line add up to 180 because already this one is there so you simply subtract this from 180 which is 50 degrees plus 64 degrees from 180 okay which is going to give us uh, 180 uh, minus 114 if i'm not mistaken there which is going to give us 66 degrees all right then so that's what we how you determine this one then ced that is c e d this angle here from c to e to d that is this angle and as you can see from this angle we're talking about angles inside a triangle and we know that angles in a triangle at the 180 because remember i told you that these two are equal from that concept of what of tangents so c e d is simply going to be 180 degrees minus the sum of the two 66 plus uh, 66 degrees which is going to be 180 minus uh, 66 plus 66 which is 132 degrees so if we subtract we are going to obtain 48 degrees so which means this angle is 48 this angle is 48 so that's how you simply work out with the diagram know your angles know your theorem circle geometry is all about theorems and i think i managed to work all of the theorems uh, all of the theorems i did them so make sure that you watch the videos on our circle geometry the introductions of circle geometry so that you'll be able to understand what's happening there okay on number 12 we are given that there is a cost of making a phone call the that is the condition that we are given uh for this particular question guys we, uh, the cost of making a telephone call on tinec is 25 uh, cents per minute so we're given the time frame that is going to be taken that is per minute is 25 cents then we've got uh, kuda who has got p cents and is able to make a call all right then there is a guy who is called uh, Tolani who has got q cents and this guy is not able to make a call because they're saying it's insufficient for him to make a call I write down three inequalities in terms of p and or q other than p is greater than zero or Q is greater than zero, which satisfy the given conditions. Okay, so that those two are obvious inequalities because they are directly like that. Okay, this is what is happening, guys. We want we are given a certain consideration where there is a condition that for you to make a call, what you need is 25 cents per minute. Okay, so which means if you have got a 25 cents, you are able to make a call. okay so what does this mean in terms of our inequality anything that is greater than or equal to this 25 cents is able to make a call any amount because this is an amount that you are referring of 25 cents so we are saying for this amount that we have we are able to make a call as long anything is equal to this or greater than to this okay so we have got kuda here we have got p cents and is able to make a call so that alone can give us an inequality to say that if kuda is able to make a call then it means kuda we has got p cents his amount is actually greater than or equal to 25 because he is able to make a call with 25 with a p cents so it's either his amount was directly equal to 25 or it was equal to uh, it was greater than 25 because they are saying 25 cents per minute you are able to make a call all right then let's move on to this uh tolan tolan is good q cents which is insufficient to make a call which means this amount is less than what is required to make a call which is 25 
cents so which means the q cents the amount that he had is not equal to this or is not greater than to this so which means it's less than 25 it's an inequality all right but there's something that is uh because these are the two conditions that we can have but now they said we want three where is the third one okay the third one guys is that definitely could i here pay it has got a certain amount which is greater than 25. Lolan here, yes, with this amount, maybe he has got a two cents or he's got five cents or you got a whatever that he has. But if we add their amounts, the amount for Kuda and the amount for Lolan here, definitely their amount is going to be greater than what is going to be greater than 25 because already Kuda is able to make a call. So, which means he has got already something that is at 25. Plus, what Kulan uh, has, it is supposed to give us something which is greater than 25. Because we are saying he, Kula alone is able to make a call. Which means Kula alone, let's just say he's having 25 cents. He's able to make a call. The moment that Kulan produces this amount, maybe he has got 2 cents. The moment he has got 2 cents, if we add 25 plus 2, it's greater than so the moment you add their um, their money it is going to be greater than 25 so that can be your third inequality there so that's what you heard guys i think uh we understand we are together uh we are given line a b whose equation that is the equation of line a b number 13 we're given the equation of the line which is 6y is equal to 7x plus uh, 48 that is the Sorry, that is the equation of the line. So the question is to calculate the gradient of line AB. So remember, guys, I told you whenever you're given to calculate the gradient from an equation of a straight line, you simply make y to be the subject. Okay. So let us make y already. Here we can just divide by 6 each and every term. The moment we do this, we are going to be left with 7 over 6x plus uh, this is going to give us 8 so why are we doing this because the moment we write our equation in the form of y is equal to mx plus c this m here represents your gradient so that means our gradient is going to be this is our m the value that is affecting x which is 7 over 6 so that is your gradient in this case all right just like that guys just like that on number b the equation of the line parallel to AB which passes through this point 31 okay and we are given the format this time we are given this format to use okay so this is what is going to happen the first thing that you have is that these two lines they are parallel okay these two lines they are parallel and what do we know about parallel lines we know that if two lines are parallel they have got same gradient so that is the first thing that you are supposed to take that from these lines that we have the gradient of line a b which is parallel to this line that we know that it just passes through a certain point they have got the same gradient and we said gradient is represented by what by m m is the one that represents the gradient so we are going to take that gradient remember here guys said m represents gradient and our gradient is 7 over 6 so we are going to have 7 over 6 as our gradient. So what am I going to do is to simply find now the equation because I'm given that this point is going to pass, uh, this line is going to pass through a point 3, 1. There's a point where it is going to pass through and also the format that I'm going to use which is AY plus BX. So I'm going to explain about this format later on as for now let us find the equation as usual as we know how to determine our equation remember guys i told you to find an equation of a straight line you've got so many ways and formulas but you can simply use y is equal to mx plus c where m is the gradient and you are given the gradient we already have the gradient is what it's 7 over 6 which is your m so y is equal to 7 over 6x because we said these ones they are parallel so you shall have the same gradient all right 
then what i'm going to do is to calculate the value of c using this point that i'm given both this is x and this is y it's a point that will x and y so in place of x i'm going to substitute 3 in place of y i'm going to substitute 1 so that's 1 in place of y is equal to 7 over 3 7 over 6 times x in place of x i'm going to substitute 3 plus c so let's see guys here 3 into 3 that 1 3 into 6 that is uh, 2 so you're going to be left with 7 over 2 so it's 1 minus 7 over 2 which is equal to c so how can i find c guys i'm subtracting how do you subtract guys 1 minus 7 over 2 this is your denominator is 2 so which means this one is same as 2 over 2 minus 7 over 2 so you can simply subtract 2 minus 7 which is minus 5 over 2 so this c is going to give us minus 5 over 2 yes you can do whatever that you want 1 over 1 then you find the lcm and so forth yes you can do that but you can just make this to be the same then you can subtract direct so this is our c which is our y intercept so you can substitute this c into e in place of c y is equal to 7 over 6 x okay in place of c we substitute the value of c which is minus 5 over 2 this is what we were used to guys if we are to check all, all those equations that i was uh, doing before this is what we were used to and that is how our answer was going to look like actually this is how our answer was supposed to to look like okay but now sorry but now the question is is it the format that we are given that we, we have no this is not the format because we are given this format here this is the format that we are given now all right so we have to write our answer in terms of this format so this format simply means we have to collect all terms to one side of the equation all right so this is what i'm going to do i have to first clear these fractions because we have got our fractions here so what is the lcm of six two and one because this one is same as over one so our lcm is six we multiply each term by six each term by six each term by six so that's going to give us 6y is equal to 6 and 6 which will cancel and this will give us 7x 2 into 3 into 4 into 6 here which is 3 then you can multiply minus 5 times 3 which is minus 15 all right so now we have got y x and our constant as you can see all these were taken to one side of the equation so we simply have to transpose so it's going to be 6y, 7x to this side is going to be minus 7x. Minus 15 to this side is going to be plus 15, which is equal to that. That is the format that you are given. So a format does not mean that this is going to be positive. This is going to be positive. This is going to be positive. Oh, no, it's just to say you are supposed to have something in terms of y, in terms of x, followed by a constant, then equal to zero. That is what that format means all right and this format is not used with fractions that is why i had to clear fractions but if the question was just for you to calculate the equation to find the equation and you are not given the format which means you could have left your answer like that one that we had at that stage which was 7 over 6x minus 5 over 2 we could have just left our at that stage it was still fine okay then uh, let's see on the other part uh, this one is one of the most confusing questions and i don't know how people get confused on this typical question where we are given 4m on number 14 uh, a we are given that 4m is equivalent to 7n and you're asked to calculate or to find the ratio of m s to n take note guys when you're answering questions this ratio of m s to n is the same as writing as m over n like this so it's not like you are just cancelling to say m s to n so it's 4 s to 7 no it's not like that you can at least find m over n so what you need is to know what is the value of m what is the value of n that is what you need to know so how can you know the value of m and the value of n i can simply divide this because i want m over n so i can divide by n by n both sides so this can cancel i'm having 4m 
over n which is equal to 7 but what I need is m over n so what can I achieve that definitely I have to divide by 4 both sides by 4 both sides so this can cancel so I'm going to be left with uh, m over n which is equal to 7 over 4 so m is equal to 7 n is equal to 4 so for us to find m as to n m is 7 n is 4 that is what this part means guys so please answer this question properly do not just look at the question and no 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 that's not how you attempt questions in exam understand how the question is presented all right then there is a guy who had a, a holiday trip to south africa which cost him uh 333 rand if the exchange rate was one us dollar as to eight rand calculate the cost of the trip in us dollars giving your answer to the nearest cent okay so this is what you are given guys you are given per each us dollar that we have it is equivalent to eight rand so here we are given how many rent for the trip 333 rent for the trip so how what is going to be the equivalent just your simple proportion guys what you are given is 333 over 8 times what times a dollar then you convert your answer to the next decimal place so there you have to divide properly guys i don't know 8 into 33 that is into 32 which is four times remainder 1 8 into 13 that is 1 into 13 and it's going to give us remainder of what five okay into 50 that is eight into 50 which is going to be six somewhere there remainder two which is uh because it's going to be 48 then 50 50 minus 48 which is two into 28 into 20 that is uh, 2 into 16 then there's a remainder of four something so guys this is a normal division but remember this is money so you have to run to the nearest descent which is to the nearest uh two digits here which is going to be 41.63 dollars so that is what you had here so that's how guys uh they can be asked these questions okay factorize completely this is a 3x cubed minus y minus 12x cubed so maybe i can just write so that so maybe someone is not seeing clearly but uh, this is actually uh clear all right so this is what i'm going to do in this case i'm going to choose the highest common factor remember when you factorize you have to pick the highest common factor between the two because this is 3x cubed minus 2 of y cubed so what is our highest common factor the highest number that we can factor out is 3 and in terms of x x and then y remember when you are working with exponents like this you take the one with the smallest exponent when you are working with the highest common factor you take the one with the smallest exponent which means for y i'm going to take y that is our highest common factor okay so we have to divide three and three cancel x cubed divide by x that is going to be x squared y and y will cancel minus 12 divided by three which is four x and x will cancel y cubed divided by y that is going to be y squared okay so that's it guys but we can't leave this answer because these are perfect squares which means this is a difference of two squares so you've got a difference of two squares here so remember guys from your difference of two squares uh, what you're going to obtain square root of this which is x square root of four which is two square root of y squared which is y one bracket is going to add the square roots and one is going to subtract the square root so uh, also guys i think you have to watch the videos there on factorization quadratic terms uh completing the square and so forth and so forth all those are uh, like are not completing the square guys like uh, factorization only you need to at least watch those videos so that you can understand what's happening all right so let's see a number 16 we are asked to solve the equation uh okay that's okay is it clear okay it's clear but uh, let me just write it here maybe it can be much clearer than what it is y plus uh, 1 over 4 to the exponent of 2 is equal to 9 over 16 okay so that is what you're given to to solve so as you can see it's a 
quadratic equation that you're given because the highest exponent is 2. But in this case, it's a type of a rational where you've got to remove this exponent of 2 by simply introducing the square root instead of expanding the brackets. You can introduce the square root both sides, which is y plus 1 over 4 is equal to the square root of any number where we know the square root of any number is a plus or a minus. So we've got square root of 9, which is 3, square root of 16, which is 4. All right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to separate this y is equal to this plus or minus here. So I'm going to be left with the plus 3 over 4. If I transpose this to this side, it is going to be a negative 1 over 4 for both. So it's going to be minus 1 over 4 or here. Remember, I started with the plus. So now I'm going to work with the minus. So O Y is going to be minus 3 over 4. Already I transposed this and it's now minus 1 over 4. So this one is not going to, to change. So that's it, guys. We have to simplify further. Uh, here, as we can see, the denominators are already the same, 4 and 4. So just subtract 3 minus 1, which is 2 over 4, which can give us 1 over 2. Or in this case, already these are the same, so just subtract minus 3 minus 1, which is minus 4 over 4 from your directed numbers. Remember, when the numbers are the same, you just add them, okay, which is minus 1. I hope by now, directed numbers, we all know what's happening there on directed numbers. So that's how this question was supposed to be like, guys, okay? Uh, just to solve, then on number 17 is to simplify. Okay, this is uh, 32, uh, this is 17a, where we are given 32a, uh, that is not a, but that is x to the exponent of 10 to the exponent of 1 over 5. That is what we are given, x to the exponent of 10 to the exponent of 1 over 5. So whenever you are simplifying such type of uh, exponents, these are exponents actually, what you are going to do, apply the concept that you've got a bracket and an exponent so this exponent is going to affect everything this 32 is like to the exponent of 1 so you're going to multiply this by 1 and this by 10 so it will be 32 1 times 1 over 5 which is 1 over 5 okay then this x is going to be like x to the exponent of 10 times 1 over 5 so definitely this will give us 2 which is x to the exponent of 2. But here we can't leave this like 32 to the exponent of 1 over 5. We have to apply our laws of exponents. Remember, a fractional exponent 5 in the denominator. So it's the, it's the fifth root of 32 to the exponent of 1 times uh, x squared, of which the fifth root of 32, that is 2, times x squared, which is 2 x squared. So. That's what you're going to, to have in this case. If you are given, if you are given a, a consideration to, to simplify sometimes, just apply your laws of exponents. At some of these questions, this is paper one, guys. Sometimes if you, the answer is direct, you can even just write it down, all right? Because it's just paper one. What is important is the correct, correct answer only. Uh, on number B, we are given to find the value of C just going to write down the question uh, that's 2 to the exponent of minus 2 times uh, 2 to the exponent of c everything over 2 to the exponent of 4 times 2 to the exponent of 3 then we are asked to find the value of c or to solve for c because to find the unknown is to solve for the unknown Okay, there's an equal sign. In me, I'm putting an equal sign instead of an equal sign. This is actually an equal sign in between there. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. I can actually cross multiply, okay, so that I can get rid of the fraction. So this is going to multiply this. This is going to multiply this. So 1 times this. This one does not change. 2 to the exponent of minus 2 times 2 to the exponent of minus C does not change, which is going to give us... If I cross multiply here, I'm going to be left with 2 to the exponent of 3 times 2 to the exponent of 4. Okay. Here we are multiplying. The bases are the same. So we can add the exponents. Remember the concept from your laws of exponents. Add the exponents, which is minus 2 plus C, 
which is equal to here the same you are multiplying the base we have the same add the exponents which is 2 to the exponent of 3 plus 4 which is going to give us 7 so that's what I'm going to have here once the bases are the same it means the exponents are now the same minus 2 plus C it definitely automatically is equal to 7 you equate the exponents so you can solve for C transpose minus 2 to this side is going to be a plus because this is subtracting so C is going to be uh, 7 plus 2 which is 9 just like that guys some of these questions is just a take uh, to take take not just uh, working with these questions as much as you can it can help you to uh, to know as much as, as possible okay on number 18 we are asked to find the, the, the inverse this is p to the exponent of minus 1 we are given the matrix p okay let me just write it down so that it can be clear p is 2 1 1 1 that is our matrix p so the first equation is to find p to the exponent of minus 1 okay p to the exponent of minus 1 guys means the inverse of p the inverse of p that is what it means the inverse of what of p so what you do remember for you to find the inverse of p you must have the determinant of what of p so this one means the determinant of p okay you must find the determinant of what of p first where we know that the determinant is the product of major diagonal minus minor diagonal if you write this as a b c and d which is a d minus b c so that's your determinant which is 2 times 1 this is your major diagonal this one 2 times 1 minus the minor diagonal which is these 2 1 and 1 so it's 1 times 1 all right and this will give us 2 minus 1 which is 1 okay so let me just try to adjust here so it's going to be 2 minus 1 which is 1 so you've got our determinant therefore the inverse remember the inverse it's 1 over the determinant so we said 2 minus 1 is 1 so it's 1 over the determinant then in the major diagonal here where we are indicating here in this diagonal these two they interchange each other they are going to interchange the position sorry so it's going to be 1 2 if interchanged the position then in the minor diagonal here this is your minor this one is your minor you multiply by negative this is one so you multiply by negative it's negative one multiply by negative it's negative one so that is your inverse of which you can just write guys one over one this is one just leave this okay so just like this is your answer that is your inverse because one over one is one just like writing as one x one x is x one z is z so it's the same one times a certain matrix is just writing that matrix without one okay so that's it guys but a negative now if it's minus one x we just like minus x just like that if it was a minus we just put a minus don't write the one one is not necessary to write okay so that's what we had guys on this particular question uh, from the p that we had but now there is a part that uh, is important here where they were asked to calculate or to find the value of q the matrix q they gave us a condition here that q is equal to 2p minus i where i represents an identity matrix okay that's an equation that we are given this one to say that matrix q is equal to 2 times matrix p minus the identity matrix so find this q so you simply need to substitute so it's 2 times p of which p we are given the matrix p this one 2 1 1 1 1 so you're going to substitute 2 1 1 minus what about this where are we going to find this matrix which is called the identity matrix remember identity matrix that's your 1 0 0 1 where you've got one in the major diagonal okay that's your identity matrix so just like that expand simplify further you are, you are done guys you see how these questions they ask them so that's your q so you can expand two times two that is for remember two is a scalar so it multiplies each and every term inside the, the matrix so two times two that's four two times one which is two 
2 times 1, which is 2, 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 1001. 0, 0, 1. So that's what you're going to have. So you can subtract corresponding terms 4 minus 1, which is 3, 2 minus 0, which is 2, 2 minus 0 here, which is 2, 2 minus 1, which is 1. So that is our matrix Q, just like that, guys. Okay, so as we can see, uh, it was a little bit uh, direct, or you can say, yeah, a little bit direct, a little bit direct. So, okay, then we are given number 19, a certain figure where we are given uh, to consider O, A, B, whatever, up to E is a hexagon, which means the, the shape has got uh, six sides, even though they are not equal. So it means it's not a regular hexagon, it's just a, a, a hexagon, just like that. So then we are given that uh, there is a part where we need to express this as, as column vector. So this is a vector representation, guys. Remember your vector as a column is represented in terms of X and Y. Where I told you that X is simply X and Y. This is a movement which is taking place. A movement which takes place. X being in the horizontal, either you are going to the right which is a positive, or you are going to the left, which is a negative. That is for X. Y being a movement which can be taken upwards or downwards, going upward, which is a positive, and going downward, which is a negative. That's a vector. That's a movement. That's what you simply do. Okay. So what you need is to find OA. So this is what you're going to simply do. This is from O to E, or E, sorry, from O to E. So you are going to simply take a root here from this point O, E. This is your E here. This is the root that you're going to take. So you're going to move X, then Y. So you start with X followed by Y. So let's move from O going to E. So definitely you're going to move this. We can't move in X going this. While least our E is here, then we move going this way. It's impossible. We have to move following where x is to the direction of x so x is this side from all so it's going to be one two so we have moved two units in terms of what in terms of x which is a positive so we said anything to the right it's a positive so this is going to be one two which is two units okay so we have moved two units that is our oe so x is two units there then y from this point to this point is one unit. So y you are moving because you move until you reach the, to a point which is in line with e. So we have moved one, two. We are now in line with e. So to e now is one point from this point to this point going up is one point. So remember we are going up. So our o e is going to be two one. That is a vector. So I told you x followed by y not not another way okay then let's move on to item two which is oa plus ad so we are simply going to do the same thing oa plus ad okay so this is what you're going to do guys we have to find oa first okay that is o to a so now we are going this direction from o to a take note where we are going we are now going this direction so it's one two but we are moving to the left in terms of x so our x is going to be a negative so it's minus two then we go upwards one take note y is going upwards so it's a positive so x is minus two y is plus one so it's minus two one so our vector oa here is minus two in terms of x y is one okay that's our vector oa plus a b a d we are going to move from a here to D, which means we're talking of A here to this point D. Okay, this is our movement. So this is what you're going to do. Remember I said we move in X then in Y. So let's move from A to D in X. We're going to move definitely this direction because D is located this way. So we're going to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. As we can see now, I am in line with the D. So I have used, I have moved our main units 1, 2, three four five so these are five units in terms of x then how many units in terms of y so i'm going to move one two so these are two units going upwards so take note for x i was moving to the right 
that's why it's a positive for why i'm moving upwards which is a positive so that is your vector ad so you can simply add these two minus two plus five which is three one plus two which is three also so that's it guys if this is not clear therefore the only way or the only option that you can do guys is to take the point then that's the only condition that will be left guys almost there why is it now okay let me adjust this way okay so like i was saying you can take only the point that 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 is, that is the corresponding points that means on this point or e you have to take the coordinates of what of those points the points that you are given in this case this is o which is zero zero uh two one but it's going to be a longer way but that is can be the condition uh depending with the way that you're understanding uh, actually so guys you have to pardon me this setup i don't know what's actually uh problem here anyways then on number d we are asked to describe fully the single transformation which maps side bc onto oe okay this is side bc this is your bc here from b to c and your o to e this is the side here this one so as we can see guys from these two sides that you are given bc and oc it means oc is our image because they're on to oe so oe is your image and bc is the object so if we are to describe definitely we know that we are supposed to join corresponding points from b to o c to e and already the corresponding they are, the points they are already joined from b to e already they are joined from b to o they are already joined and we can see that they are these are parallel lines they do not meet these lines and they are of equal length so if you measure them you are going to see that in between here we've got equal distance so which transformation that produces parallel lines of equal length when you are working with isometries because this line bc and oe they are the same so which means we are talking of rotation translation and reflection which one is our answer there that is translation that is the one with what parallel lines of equal length so which means the transformation that we are going to map from this line bc that we are talking about to this line oe it is going to be a translation so this is how you are going to describe it you are going to write it is a translation so that one is a translation why because we are producing parallel lines of equal length then for translation remember we need the translation vector where i told you that the translation vector is the image minus the corresponding object but you have to write it as a vector and we said our image is oe and our object is bc so you just take corresponding say points like o is our image so it's image minus object so you can take this point o which corresponds with b so it, o it's zero zero minus b which is zero four as a point so you can take zero zero uh, which is point O minus point B image minus object. So B is the point which corresponds to zero zero, which is at zero four. So if we subtract this, we are going to have zero minus zero, that is zero, zero minus four, which is minus four. So that is your translation vector. So you can even prove with other point to see if it is the same image minus object. Your image is E, your object is C so e minus c must give us the same answer e the point e x is 2 here and y is 1 so this is 2 1 we take the coordinate but write it as a as a vector minus c this is your c x is 2 and your y here is 5 so this is 2 5 okay so you can subtract 2 minus 2 that's 0 1 minus 5 which is minus 4 so as you can see we are having the same translation vector so this one is just like a proof that you are doing but you just need to state this it is a translation then you state your translation vector that is what is important okay so this one is just a proof that we are doing to say if what we have is actually uh, corresponding okay so that's what we actually had on this part and other part was uh, on number 20 which is uh, on uh, similarity there where we are given a condition of a map and scale where you're given all length on a map are given as one as two 
one is to 500 on their actual length so remember guys i told you that this simply means the same as one as two 500 if you can write like that you can write it as a fraction or you can just write it like this and also i told you that whenever you see this presentation on a map this is what you're supposed to visualize or to mind to say this is a centimeter which is on a map as to 500 centimeters which are on the ground so this is what is happening on the ground this is for the map all right so the question is find the actual length of a line represented on the map by a line of 7,3 centimeters on the map it is 7,3 what is the actual length that is what is on the ground the actual length is what you are referring to what is on the actual ground that is your actual length so you can convert this to any unit of measurement that is comfortable with you because you are not given the unit to say to give your answer in meters or in centimeters so you can work with this measurement to say if each centimeter is going to correspond to 500 centimeters on the actual ground what about a line which is 7,3 centimeters what is it going to represent on the ground so definitely it's going to be more which is 7,3 over 1 times 500 centimeters so this is going to give you your answer in centimeters which is going to multiply properly guys 7,3 times 500 is going to give you something like 3,550 centimeters if you were to use this in meters guys you are going to use this conversion to say because we said one centimeter corresponds with 500 centimeters so i can play around this unit of measurement to meters to kilometers depend with where i want to convert to so let me convert to meters which means i can divide by 100 which is going to give us five uh, meters okay so for each centimeter on the map it represents five meters on the ground because 500 centimeters is five meters so if that is the case that one centimeter is representing five meters on the ground what about a line which is seven comma three centimeters on the map what is it going to represent on the actual ground so what is in the map should be under the map what is under the ground under the ground there so we need this 7.3 so definitely 7,3 centimeters over one centimeter times five meters my answer is going to be in meters so that's 7,3 times five years which is going to give us 36,5 plus 7 times this which is 15 k1 7 times which is 35 plus 1 which is 36 or many decimal place one decimal place so this is your answer in meters or this one in centimeters because you are not given the unit of measurement to say your answer in meters or what okay like this one where you are given the unit of to say your answer in square centimeters there you have a restricted uh, uh, question but this one is not restricted okay on number b we are now asked to calculate the area on the map which is represented which represents an actual area so this one is an actual area which means we are talking of area on the ground the moment you talk of area you must think of area factor which is a ratio of area so area factor simply means ratio of what of areas what was this ratio for one is to 500 this is called the scale factor scale factor is a ratio that you use whenever you're calculating length like this one it was length distance in meters centimeters anything that has got square units which is area you must find area factor so where do i find this area factor okay we are going to start from here we said in a centimeter we are represented by 500 centimeters which we converted to meters and we said we are we are represented by what by five meters so this is what is going to happen now you want to represent area of 525 square meters to the map so this is what you're going to do this is your scale factor you have to square this in order to obtain 
what is referred to as the, the area factor. So from scale factor to area factor, you square what you're given. You have to square that value. Okay, so what I'm simply mean, you have to square this value, which is one squared. That's one square centimeter as to five squared, which is 25 square centimeters. So that is what you're going to have. So what does this mean? It means one square centimeter on the map one square centimeter on the map it corresponds with the 25 square meters on the ground it corresponds not to say that they are equal but it corresponds to so what about 525 square meters which is on the ground what is it going to give us in square meters so you're simply asking yourself to say what about 525 square meters which is on the ground what is it going to give us in meter in square centimeters so this one just like your simple proportion guys what you want is 525 so it's 525 square meters over 25 uh, square meters times one square centimeter so your answer is now in square centimeters so 25 into 525 guys this is going to give us 21 okay if you are not mistaken that's going to give us 21 so you have to divide until you obtain that so that is your area which is on the map and this is the area on the ground these two they are the same someone measuring an area of 21 square centimeters on the map can know what is on the ground so it's like your scale from even from your geograph i think you understand much uh, from your geograph there where you've got uh, those map uh, they, they, they just a, 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 a picture of what is happening there okay then on number 21 you're given to evaluate the logarithms all right we are asked to evaluate the first logarithm on 21a okay this one i remember i told you guys that you can simplify this type of a logarithm in different formats or different ways so this is what i'm just going to do okay if you are given this you can divide remember guys uh, when you are working with the logarithms when you are dividing like this you can apply this concept of writing this in terms of the same base 4 and 64 so 64 in terms of 4 this is 4 to the exponent of 3 all right in base of 5 and 4 just is going to remain as it is 4 to the exponent of 1 in terms of 5 so this one cannot change so the moment we can write in terms of the same number here we can drop the exponent remember there's an exponent so we can drop our exponents which is going to give us 3 log 4 in base 5 over if we drop the exponent this one is going to give us 1 log 4 in base 5 why doing this because the moment these two are the same they can cancel out which means i'm just left with 3 over 1 which is 3 but is it the only way that i can answer such type of equation no this cannot be because remember i told you if you are dividing logarithms log of a divided by log of b is the same as log a in base b provided that these bases are the same then you can write it in this format so which means log 64 in base 5 over log 4 in base 5 these bases are the same so they do not meet just to be the same as they are it means i can write this as log 64 in base 4 so once i have something like this i'm now back to those logarithms that i'm used where i can say let log 64 in base 4 be equal to x so this one is your 64 which is equal to the base to the exponent of x from your log form to index form remember guys if you are given log a base b is equal to c a is equal to b to the exponent of c so the bases must be the same here 4 to the exponent of 3 is equal to 4 to the exponent of x so the bases are the same 4 so x is equal to what 3 so which means all this whole logarithm is going to give us a 3 just like what we had or at this stage maybe i don't want to use this concept of using let log this and that but remember guys uh there's a concept also that i worked on uh where i told that if you are given a log at this stage you can actually 
write it like log 64 in base 4 you can actually simplify this as in base of 4 log 4 to the exponent of 3 in base of 4 so you can drop the exponent which is 3 log 4 base 4 why writing like this because we know that log 4 base 4 is what is 1 so this gives us three. So guys there are so many ways that can give us that answer 3 that we are seeing there there are so many ways and concept that we could have done this to obtain that answer that we see okay so anyways let's see another part which is uh, 1 plus log 3 to simplify okay guys this is a little bit fair now I don't know it's the question paper is is it too, too, too oh, let me just maybe try my test but guys okay so this is 1 plus this is log this is item B where we've got 1 plus log 9 in base of 3 All right log 9 in base of 3 so how are we going to simplify such type of a log this is we, we are adding there okay yeah add. so there are two options that we can do either to just simplify this direct from uh, from your logarithms because you know that you can simplify so which means we can uh, apply which laws that you can have you remember in base of three we can actually simplify this let's just say we have got um, logarithm of 9 in base 3 which is going to give us just saying let uh, log of 9 in base 3 be equal to x that's 9 3 to the exponent of x 3 to the exponent of 2 3 to the exponent of x remember from your basis guys so x is going to give us 2 which means all this is giving us 2 because uh, I think that's like a little bit direct to say that the given logarithms that you have in this case okay the logarithm of 9 that you have is giving you 2 so you can just add 1 plus 2 which is 3 or this is what we can do since we know that we cannot add this number because this is 1 which is added to a log so I can convert uh, the 1 to a log like I did to convert log to a number so I can also convert that number 1 to a log it's another way that i can do how is it possible to convert a one to a logarithm okay you are in base of three and you know that for you to obtain a one is only a condition of a base and a base being equal that gives us a one so what is going to give us a reference is the base because you want to have this in base of three so this one is same as log of 3 in base 3 as long the number and the base are the same you obtain 1 so that means 1 is same as log 3 base 3 plus log 9 base 3 so as you can see now we are now having logarithms so where you know that when the base are the same and you are adding you are going to multiply the numbers so you're going to multiply 3 times 9 which is 27 in base of 3 so from this you can simplify now this logarithm of 27 base 3 where we can have let log 27 that part that you do in base 3 be equal to x so that's your 27 is equal to 3 to the exponent of x so once the bases are the same which means we can equate the exponents so we have to make sure that they are the same so 27 in base of 3 is 3 to the exponent of 3 3 to the exponent of x so as you can see the bases are now the same so x is equal to 3 so if x is equal to 3 it means all this whole part is going to give us a 3 so as you can see we're obtaining the same answer but different methods different ways so it's not like you are having just one part to use and no, no, it's not like that so this one i'm just going to work on this but what happens is that guys uh these values they won't be direct here they won't be direct like uh, the moment you you scan these papers you scan them you send them and so forth so they won't be that direct uh, to say the the value that was there is the one that is uh, is going to remain as it is no they are going to be like some adjustments now all these things okay so there we need uh, to construct uh, from that plane that we are given so here we need uh, the first part which is three centimeters from B so we just need to measure uh, three centimeters from B in this case 
so you must just measure properly this is just local sky is three centimeters at a point somewhere like this then from b that is remember it's a circle this one b is a fixed point so at point b just mark at point b measure it. if you have measured this three centimeters then you just draw a circle so that's gonna be a circle this one that is uh, the locus of points equidistant from a fixed point, which is B. All right, then uh, above AB, which are two centimeters from line AB. Take note, it's above AB and two centimeters from AB. Remember, two centimeters from AB was supposed to give us a pair of parallel lines, but this time they said above AB, so it is not going to give us a pair. It is going to give us just one line on top of B, but it is two centimeters, so you measure two centimeters properly then above which means on top of this line so what you're going to do is to mark this is my two centimeters and arc there then it be another two centimeters then you join uh the given axe okay so you just join these specs at the top of those arcs here you join the top part of the axe this one the curvy party okay the turning point of those arc that is where you join so this is two centimeters from a b don't write anything just construct mark and label p1 and p2 the points which are three centimeters techno they are three centimeters from b which means you're talking about this circle that's three centimeters from b and at the same time these are points which are three centimeters from b and two centimeters from line a b two centimeters from line a b this is the line that we did f so which means you're definitely talking of this point and this point which is your p1 and your p2 so you mark the point like this then you you will name them p1 p2 then measure the distance p1 p2 then you have to measure properly so just like i said uh, this is not certain now because of that but you are supposed to measure i don't know but according to me it's 4,5 according to this paper but it's a scanned paper so everything is going to change it's not going to give us the exact thing but we need to measure that distance okay so that's what we had then on number 23 we are given uh there the b at the bearing uh the bearing of p from q is 237 then find the bearing of q from p that is q from p that is we are simply referring to this angle here so take note this angle and this angle they are equal as we know guys so you can simply subtract this uh, 237 minus 180 of a straight line so if we subtract uh, the straight line from 208 or you can use the core interior angle this is going to give us uh, 57 degrees okay so this is uh, 57 degrees so if this is 57 degrees it means also this is 57 de degrees okay but this is three figure bearing so it's going to be 0, 5, 7 degrees three digits so you just put a zero there all right on b the diagram shows two semicircles you're given a pm and a qb a qb the bigger one that is what you have and you are given uh, a m these the two they are equal okay calculate the perimeter of the shaded region so take note perimeter guys this is the distance that you have to move from a p to m here from m to b from m q to a so as you can see from a to p this is what uh this is a semicircle so you're simply referring to the length of arc of a semicircle uh from 2 pi r which is a complete circle then half of a circle is going to be 2 pi r because you're simply talking of half of a circle so if the full circle is pi r uh, 2 pi r therefore half of a circle is going to be pi r that is the length from this point to this point it is referred as what is pi r okay so we need the length a p we need to calculate the length of a p m plus m to b that is where it is shaded plus m b plus from b to q to a which is the larger semicircle which is b q a but we said this is a semicircle and the length of a semicircle is given by pi r pi is given 22 over 7 22 over 7 times the radius in this case this is a diameter for the first circle the, the smaller circle this is your diameter guys 3,5 over 2 
and we know that radius is diameter over 2 so you can divide 3,5 over over 2 like that so you can have your perimeter here okay you move on uh, here so let's just put this one MB is already there MB that's your 3,5 so we shall add at the end okay then your B to Q you do the same from B to Q to A that one is a semicircle again so the length is going to be pi r l pi r so which is pi 22 over 7 times r which is the radius for the bigger semicircle this is your radius because from a to m from m to b is equal so your radius is what is 3,5 you do not divide by anything there so this is what you're supposed to have guys just combine these two and combine so this is going to be 11 uh, 7 into 3 that is 0 comma into 5 which is 0 comma 5 11 times 5 that is 55 or maybe a small place 1 so you're going to have 5 comma 5 plus 3 comma 5 plus we combine here so this one okay is paid, say 22 over 7 times why am i okay this is going to be 1 uh, 0 comma 5 says so 0 comma 5 times 22 which is simply half of 22 which is 11 okay so you add everything which is going to give us 20 centimeters there so that is our perimeter that is what we have for this uh, perimeter in this case so you have to be very very careful with how these questions are presented uh, something like that okay number 24 we are given these are the peoples in a class and they are 30. Two peoples are chosen from random. Find the probability that one is aged 11 and the other is aged 14. So 11 here, guys, probability. We've got three outcomes over the total, which is 30. And the other one is aged 14. Here 14, I mean, there are six out of what? Out of 30. Uh, this we are just given a normal consideration can use with replacement without replacement i don't know then you just have to simplify as much then calculate the mean so the mean guys is simply the sum of terms where you have to multiply 11 by 3 plus 12 by 10 okay plus 13 by 8 plus 14 uh, by 6 plus 15 by 3 everything over the total which is 30 in this case all right so this one is just a normal uh like presentation that you are simply doing so you have to combine your terms uh properly 11 times 3 which is going to give us 33 in this case so we shall have uh, 33 plus 120 plus 18 times 8 which is something like 104 so you just need to combine everything uh properly in this case then uh over 30 which is going to give us something like 386 over 30 so you can reduce guys uh this one at least it must give us 12 and uh, 13 over 50 something like that so here just reduce by the smallest number to start with two you move on to just work with the smallest number as possible the smallest number that you have there all right name the triangle which is similar to number 25 you are given two triangles so as you can see guys if you're working with similar figures it's all about the the the, the, the angles that you'll be having these are parallel lines as you can see so this angle here if you can see you have got a z here it corresponds with this angle these two are alternate angles this angle and this angle with this angle these are alternate angles again this angle and this angle then these are vertically opposite angles so similar figures they are equal so you are simply saying they are equal in terms of angles okay so we are saying uh, triangle this is triangle PQX, okay, is similar to triangle, angle P, angle P corresponds with S, okay, angle Q, angle Q corresponds with R here, okay, angle X and X, they correspond to each other, so these are similar figures, all right, then on B, 
using the results in item a find the value of y so what do we know from similar figures we know that from similar figures ratio of sides is equal guys i think i talked about that pq over the corresponding side sr is equal to qx over the corresponding side rx is equal to so it's q and x r and x they are now px and sx so it's px over sx so what you just do you choose a region or you choose where it is complete like pq over sr you do not have anything pq sr you do not have anything so you can substitute here qx this is your qx which is y plus 2 over rx from r to x this is 2 y minus 1 which is equal to px over sx which is a px that is 2 x which is 3 so it's 2 over 3 so just you know, now you have a normal equation guys where you can solve for y by uh, cross multiplying definitely 3 times y which is 3y plus 3 times 2 which is 6 so 3 multiply is everything 3 and y 3y 3 and 2 which is 2 times y here which is 4y 2 times minus 1 which is minus 2 so I can collect like terms 6 plus 2 if I take this to this side it's going to be plus then I'm going to be left with 4y minus 3y 3y to that side which is 8 is equal to y 4 minus 3 that is y so that's it guys you can simply work out from that so we have in this value of y now the question is to ask is asking you to calculate the qr the length of qr from q to r here <clears throat> so take note from q to r you are combining the two y plus two and this one of two y minus two y minus one so that is what you are combining now so your y is eight your y is eight so you're simply substituting here eight plus two plus 2 times 8 which is 16 minus 1 so you just have to combine guys uh, properly uh, which is going to give us 25 centimeters if I'm not mistaken there that's 10 26 minus 1 which is 25 centimeters all right so that's what we had just save to substitute that's the numerical value that you are given all right then you've got uh, one of the important questions that I wanted actually us to focus on which is on number 26 there it's a special type of a question where we are given a presentation which is a, of a velocity time graph but we are given that from the beginning that is from the start from this point up to this point this is represented by this equation of v is equal to 6 plus 2t which is a, a presentation of an equation of a straight line all right so this is a relationship for every point that of v it is going to correspond with the time when t is equal to 0 1 2 and so forth okay so like this one the question is to calculate the velocity of the object when t is equal to 0 so you are simply substituting since we have got v is equal to 6 plus 2t and it's within the line that we are talking about within this line so we are simply saying it is 0 here we are going to substitute t which is equal to 0 so in place of t you substitute 0 which means our v is going to be 6 plus 2 times 0 that's so that's it guys so here our a is going to be 6 meters per second so which means we've got a velocity of 6 here just the same even at 10 we could have said at 10 here what is the velocity because we do not know the velocity that is going to correspond at 10 here so you have to substitute in place of t you substitute 10 so if we substitute 10 here it is going to give us 6 plus 2 times 10 which is 20 which is going to give us 26 so at this point we have got 26 meters per second all right uh is that so yeah 26 so let's move on be the deceleration of the object deceleration is from this point deceleration is where there is a decrease in speed this is acceleration then this is deceleration so but we know that uh, deceleration is simply taken from what from acceleration okay so we just take from acceleration which is the change in velocity over the change in time v2 minus v1 over t2 minus t1 all right that's v2 
which is the final because it's now at rest where at rest your velocity is zero there minus v1 where it started from this point where we said we've got 26 remember how you obtained that 26 over t2 minus t1 that's 22 minus 10 so 22 minus 10 so you simply got uh, minus 26 over 22 minus 10 which is 12 so that's what you're going to have guys which is going to give us uh, negative 13 over 6 in meters per square second as our acceleration but deceleration we are going to neglect that negative because that is what is happening so it's 13 over 6 meters per square second or you can simplify further as a decimal i don't know but that is the presentation that we have there on number c we have got the total distance the distance covered in 22 seconds because in 22 seconds that is the the whole part of the object so you have to simply calculate the total distance here where we have got the first part here which is a trapezium and got a triangle so you can just use this as a trapezium the first figure here a trapezium because these sides they are parallel okay so remember our distance is equal to area so we shall calculate area of a trapezium half sum of parallel size times the perpendicular height plus the area of a triangle which is half base times perpendicular height so the size which are parallel is 6 and uh, 26 here this side and this side so it's half of 6 plus 26 times the height which is the height from 0 to 10 all right plus half times the base times perpendicular for the triangle that is from 10 to 22 that's 22 minus 10 which is 12 times the height which is 26 that is your height okay so 6 plus uh, 26 which is going to give us 32 so this is 32 and half of 32 is 16 16 times 10 which is 160 plus half of uh, 12 which is 6 and 6 times 26 which is a uh, 30 so 6, 6 something 36 so it's gonna be 156 if you add properly guys so i don't know if you add properly if we are obtaining the same thing so that's your distance okay which is the total distance then the average speed of the whole journey definitely that is distance over time so that's your speed remember speed is distance over time so your distance is the one that was traveled in 22 seconds which is the whole journey 316 meters over the time in 22 seconds all right so this one guys we have to reduce just like what we did there on velocity on uh, on, the, on the acceleration so if you divide properly you must obtain something like 14 comma 36 it's gonna repeat 3636 3, 6, something like that so it's going to be meters per meters per second this one is velocity just meters per second so because this is meters second so just divide guys properly so this is meters per second all right so but i hope the idea guys what is important is the idea of what is happening that is what is important actually there what is happening that is what is happening that is what is important actually okay then uh we are given another part here where it's a number 27 which is uh where we have got uh the information that we have from our solving triangles but it's a non rectangle triangle and we are given some of the information for this triangle uh sine 60 and all this then the question is to calculate the value of x leave your answer in set form so you and how can i find x actually this is a completed diagram we have got uh, three sides but just imagine guys if this pc was not there if this 14 was not there how were you going to calculate that 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 uh, side how are we going to calculate this 14 this is what we're going to do we're going to apply uh, cosine root because we are given two sides and an included angle in between let's say this side was not there just take a closer look like it's not there what were you going to do you're going to apply cosine root to find the third side but now it's there because your cosine root states that a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a so your a squared is the side that you are supposed to calculate and in this case it's there which is 14 so we're going to use it as 14 squared is equal to b and c which are these sides x 
and 2x. So it's going to be x plus 2x squared, guys, is 4x squared, because it's 2x, like this in bracket, which is going to give us 4x squared, minus 2ab, which is 2 times x, times that 2x, cos of a, which is the angle in between these sides, which is 120 degrees. Okay, so that's it, guys. So 14 squared, which is 196, 14 times 14, which is here we're going to add like terms 1 plus 4, which is 5x squared minus 2 times 1 times uh, 2, which is uh, actually 4x squared. So you're going to have 4x squared cos 120. Never be tempted to subtract these two because these are multiplying. So you have to multiply first by cos 120. But where are we going to have cos 120? Here we are given cos 60 degrees. Okay, remember guys, I told you that there is a great relationship. This is an obtuse angle. This is an acute angle. So for cos, cos 120 is an obtuse angle, which is a negative. So it is going to be negative of this value that we are given. So it is going to be 196 is going to be 5x squared minus 4x squared times minus value of cos 120, which is cos 60, which is negative 0, 0,5. So it is going to be a negative cos and tan, they are negative. Only sign which is positive when you are referring to what? To obtuse angles. All right. So this is it, guys. 196 is going to give us minus and minus. That's a plus. So we've got 5x squared plus 0, 0,5. Anything times 0, 0,5 means you're multiplying. You're simply multiplying by half. 0, 0,5 means half. So it's half of 4. And what is half of 4? We all know that half of 4 is 2. So it's going to give us 2x squared. So you can add 196 plus 5 plus 2, which is 7x squared, divide by 7. Definitely remember, I want to calculate the value of x, so I have to divide by 7. Definitely there. So this will be x squared is equal to 196 divided by 7, which is going to give us something like 28. And we are told to find x. So introduce the square root both sides. So x is going to be the square root of 28 in set form. Or you can simplify further. Remember, in 28, the highest perfect square that we have is 4. So you can have 4 times 7, which gives us 28. And the square root of 4 is 2. So it can be 2 square root of 7. That is your x, which is uh, centimeters or units. Okay. So you can leave this as a square root of 28 or 2 square root of 28 in what? In set form. So that's what we had, guys. And now the question is to calculate the area of triangle ABC. So ABC. So X, remember X is there. We said this X is square root of 28. So this is going to be 2X, which is 2 square root of 28. So you can use area of a non-right angle triangle where we know that the area of a non-right angle triangle is half AB sine theta. You know that half AB sine theta. So it's going to be half times A and B. These are the sides which are creating the angle of 120, which is square root of 28 times B, which is the other side, which is 2 square root of what? 2 square root of 28 times sine theta, which is the angle that is in between, which is 120 degrees. Okay, so you can simplify this and this can cancel. Remember from your sides, guys, square root of 28 times square root of 28 is going to give us 28. Square root of A times square root of A gives us A. From our laws of sides times sine 120. Where are we going to have this? Just like I was saying that it is only sign of an obtuse angle that is a positive. All they are negative. So this sine 120, we are going to take it from its acute angle where we are saying 120 and 60 they are found on a straight line so you take the acute which is 60 so this is 0 0.87 so this one is a positive tan and cos are the ones which carry a negative for obtuse angles but sign it's positive all right so definitely you have to multiply these two guys you are going to obtain two four three six and our main decimal place is one two which is going to be square centimeters so that's your area guys that's what we had and this is 
what we had as our last uh, part actually uh, okay let me just pray, okay so that is the last part that we had so as you can see guys that's how they ask these typical questions and how you're supposed to answer these so we just hope that we understand what's happening and to revise uh, more questions you just need to revise more questions where you are as you prepare yourselves for the exams which are to come uh, so that's what we had guys from Amazon African Motives till we meet again